I often see drawings that, while they're nicely done, I can't help but think, but the scene's just a little bit boring. These 10 compositional techniques, as I think of them, are 10 ways of composing or adding to our scene that, in my thinking, create more visual drama, visual interests, and if we want to put our drawings in at some sort of competitive marketplace, certainly seem to result overall in more attention. So here's number one. Compositions with stairs and pathways draw us in. We can't help but walk up the stairs in our mind, or we can't help but go down the stairs, possibly even bringing back memories of doing this ourselves. It doesn't have to be stairs. It may well be a roadway. And of course, as we spend the time moving down the pathway or up the stairs, we're now being drawn in to the detail that we see either on each side or at the end. And we have more chance of discovering all the things that the artist has put into this scene. So pathways, stairways, a great compositional element. They certainly don't have to be in the center of our composition, but to include them is a great technique to draw the viewer into our scene and therefore spend more time looking at it. Another great compositional technique is our use of shade and shadow. It's easy to think that shade and shadow are these things that we just add to the side of something to give it a little more three-dimensionality, but to make the mistake of thinking they're more like a garnish on the side of a plate than they are the meal itself. But shade, shadow is a wonderful tool to use to focus attention and to create drama and interest. And of course, we still can use it to get a wonderful sense of three-dimensionality. We can even go to the extent of a night scene and use light to focus attention on a subject which isn't even in the light itself. So any one of these scenes in a full daylight or a more even diffuse light would not have had the same visual drama that we get by using the light deliberately to focus attention. This compositional technique may not be suitable for all subjects, but particularly for an artist who likes to draw a lot of architecture, adding figures adds a sense of scale to our buildings, and it can be a great contrast to a massive architectural detail. The human figures here somehow make the architectural detail seem more architectural, and contrast always creates drama. This next compositional technique is to choose unusual viewing angles. Try looking up almost from underneath a scene that normally would be drawn from further back looking more straight on or looking down on something that normally we don't get the opportunity to look down on that we're normally looking up at or it might be looking across at eye level at a part of a building that normally we are looking up at and instead we're looking down at a part of a building that normally we're looking along at at eye level. So taking a familiar scene or a familiar type of scene, but giving us a viewing angle, giving us a perspective that's unexpected, pulls our attention in as the viewer starts to think, I've never seen it from this angle before, and then starts to explore the detail. Another strong compositional technique to use is what I call framing. It's where we literally use some element of our drawing to create a frame through which we view another part of it. So this archway creates a frame. And while the archway doesn't extend across the bottom, I've used tone to link this gap between the bottom of the two arches and the top of the arch in a visual way. And so this becomes a space which funnels our view to look at the detail that's drawn before. It's attention grabbing, it draws us in, and it creates a sense of drama. And a very similar technique has been used here at the Musée du Louvre. But frames don't have to be quite literally a frame, and they don't have to extend the whole way around. A very common but effective way of framing an object is to view it through the end of the street, where it's framed on each side by the buildings of the street we're looking along. Here, however, it also is framed across the bottom, similarly with a darker tone that extends up both sides of the street, creating a three-sided frame of tone. So some sort of framing helps to focus our attention. And in that time that it does that, we're drawn further in to looking at the drawing. This next compositional technique is to separate part of our subject with an emphasis 
that comes from the weight of our line and the tone that we use. And it may be part of a broader technique such as I use to create a sense of depth because darker things with heavier lines look closer, but it also creates compositionally a strong focus on these emphasized parts. They don't have to be in the center. And even though very dark tonal values are used here, to my perception, the weight of the line and the contrast between the white and the black of the line here makes this a stronger focal point than this. So in this composition, our attention is focused here first, off to one side, and then we move across to this side. And then finally, we look past this object that we first looked at and start to see the things that are further in the distance. So by varying our line and our contrast in various parts of our scene, it's not just that we help create a sense of depth, but we also lead the eye of our viewers around our scene. And in this drawing, I use my heavier line and my stronger tonal contrast on this church, even though strictly speaking, these closer structures should have had a stronger line and stronger tonal contrast. I really wanted this church to be the focal point by adjusting the technique that I would normally have used to create a more realistic, closer looking foreground. I ensure that all eyes go to this amazing structure in this amazing view. So good composition is not just what we choose to make our drawing of and how we arrange it in our space on the paper, but it's also the way in which we draw it to attract and to focus attention. In this point, we have another great compositional technique, and that's to use perspective lines to pull us in to a scene. In some ways, they're a bit like a pathway, but instead of being lines that invite our feet to walk along, these are lines that invite our eyes to look along. And again, they draw us into our scene and start to involve us with the things we've drawn. The perspective lines may draw our attention straight up. It certainly doesn't have to be along in a straight line, along a facade of windows. And of course, perspective lines certainly don't have to even be straight. Our perspective lines can draw us along in wonderful sweeps and curves and move us through the spaces of the scene that's being drawn. And I hope you're starting to notice that while I've chosen these drawings to illustrate a particular compositional technique for attracting attention and drawing the viewer into our scene, you can see some or even many of the techniques that we've covered so far in them as well. So in this one, in many ways, this detail here is framed by this sweep of architecture and also by this sweep of darkness. And we've used lighting over here to focus attention. And when we focus attention further back in our scene, again, it's drawn us into our picture. In fact, what we saw in that last interior scene is this next compositional technique, and that's strong tonal contrast in itself. Having very dark darks, very light lights, having them close to each other, regardless of what they're on or what they're highlighting, creates a dramatic effect. And again, that captures attention, and the effect is even stronger when we combine it with some of those other techniques we've looked at so far such as unusual viewpoints, framing, use of light to attract attention, and strong perspective lines that direct our eyes. Did someone say strong perspective lines to attract and direct our eyes? Strong light and dark, using light to direct attention, as well as the high impact and therefore attention grabbing nature of high contrast light and dark scenes. This is the sort of scene where once I looked at it and thought, oh, it's a shame the light was in the wrong place because this would have made an interesting composition. But of course, now I've come to realize that the opportunities for using tone of various values creates great compositional opportunities. And so all of our subject is actually highlighted from the sky behind by the tone that's been applied. And the various planes have been separated by the stronger tonal values in the foreground to the background. And this central arch has actually been highlighted by being slightly darker again 
than the other sides. But again, we can see this framing technique used. We can see we've used figures to give a sense of scale, not just here, but here, and even right back here. So we get a sense of the distance. And we have a highest contrast is between these figures and the sunlight behind this archway, which also focuses attention through the arch and also, I think, stops the whole thing from becoming just a little bit too gloomy. So this is another scene that I would have once said was too dark to draw. And instead, I've come to realize that the shade and the shadow we have here is actually an opportunity to create a sense of focus and drama. Again, we can see many of the elements we've talked about in this scene. Although most of the scene is in shade and shadow, we do have some lovely contrasts of light coming through that focus attention primarily here, but also further along. Help to highlight this figure who's moving down, which brings us to our final point. And after our final point, I'm going to show you just a few of my drawings which have done well on social media and to highlight how they've used many of these compositional techniques that we've talked about. And this compositional technique is tell a story. Presuming our drawing has no text, the story has to be told through what we draw. We have to somehow create a sense of characters and of setting and activity. And so here we have young love on a drizzly, wet Paris afternoon. And again, we have the idea of the roadway, the pathway also to lead us in. We have strong tonal contrasts of the path becoming brighter as the sides get darker, which again makes it easier for us to go up to this point further along the street. Maybe sit for a moment in whatever memories we might have that this sort of scene triggers for us. It could be the story of an artist sitting in Montmartre painting, which again may trigger memories of our own or thoughts about the artist's life in Paris. We've used strong contrast and we've actually placed our main subject in shadow rather than placing our main subject in the light and having the shadow behind. And by flipping the expected way of, if you like, organizing the lighting in our scene, we've created a little more focus and attention. Or it may be something a little more heartwarming, as in this scene, which to me is a father and son setting out for a day's activity somewhere in Paris, or maybe going out of the city for a day. As well as the idea of a story, there is the idea of the path moving through, drawing our eyes as well. We have used lighting to both highlight the path and therefore the journey, but also in the shadows behind to highlight the figures. This is not a point I've talked about, but using trees and foliage as a contrast to architecture is also another great compositional technique to create textural interests, which the cobblestones do as well. And the perspective angles all lead to this next stage of the journey. So let's just quickly look at now a couple of my drawings and see how they pull many of these elements together. So what can we see in this scene? We have our pathway to draw the eye. We have strong lighting to focus our attention into this pathway. We have people on the pathway whom we can join on their journey, but we have a very clear central character lead role if you like and he creates this sense of story and he's highlighted both by the dark shade on him and the dark shadow that he casts. We have framing and that framing is strengthened by the dark shade that we have there and the shadow that they cast on the street and we have perspective lines that also help focus our attention down into this central part of the drawing. The strong light dark contrast so close creates a strong sense of drama. And this is a very strong composition and compositional technique, which really grabs attention. And finally, we have this view of St. Paul's Cathedral. So here we have an unusual angle. We're looking down over the top of a dome that we're normally looking straight on, pretty much from a sideways view. Instead of looking up at the spire, we're looking down at the spire and we're looking down at a roof that we normally never see. So we have this unusual perspective. The perspective angles also funnel downwards into this street section here. And because the tonal values get darker down here, that also 
draws the eye. And while this is just a road with a few cars and nothing particularly to look at, by drawing us down into this section and giving us a feeling that it's a long way down over the top, by default it creates the sense of height and of how this part of the building is standing high and proud above the streets of London. We've got darker, stronger line work here to help this section of our drawing stand out and to draw the eye and capture attention. And the perspective of these dome ribs, instead of drawing us along in a straight line, actually, I think, pulls us over the edge. I always feel like I'm on a slippery dip, about to go, whoa, into the scene. So if we're going to put the time into a drawing, let's use every compositional technique to both have interesting images to include, but ones which in some way go beyond what the actual objects are and go beyond just the skill with which we draw them and create some sort of dynamic of interest and drama that connects with imagination and movement to involve the person looking at our drawing in ways they didn't anticipate and almost can't escape. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. This is one of my most popular drawings I've ever posted on social media. How many of the things we've talked about can you see here? I hope this has been helpful. Whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.